Welcome to the video lesson for section 7.3, Multivariable Linear Systems. We're going to be looking at equations that have an x, a y, and a z variable, and walk through the process to solve them using an expanded version of elimination. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we have an example of a system with three variables. Notice for our three equations, we have an x, a y, and a z. And our goal here is to try and eliminate variables so we can solve for one of them. Usually the process is to eliminate x and y and to be able to solve for z and to make it look more like our system on the right. If we do so, since we have a 0 for our x and a 0 for our y, we can see that z definitely equals 2. Once we know what z is, we can then do back substitution. So if I have identified my z value, I can take that equation, or my value actually, and plug it into equation 2. So I can plug in a 2 for z and that will allow me to figure out what y was because x was 0. And then once I knew what x and y were, I could take each one of those and plug them into equation 1 to help me solve for x. So we're going to go through a process of steps that will help us eliminate x and y and solve for z. And once we know what z is, we can then do back substitution to find y and to find x. We're going to go ahead and do some back substitution here so we can walk through that process before we jump into the elimination. So again, we identify that z has to equal 2 because we don't have an x or a y. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. We know that z equals 2. So I can then take that value and plug it into my second equation. So what I have now is y plus 4 times 2 is equal to 7. I know that 4 times 2 is 8, so we have y plus 8 is equal to 7. And then if I subtract 8 on both sides, I now know that y is equal to negative 1. So I've identified my z value. I use that to um, calculate my y. And since I now know z and I know y, I can plug them into my first equation, which would then be x minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 is equal to 9. If I do some simplifying, we end up getting x plus 2 plus 6 is equal to 9. If we do a little more simplifying, we now know or have x plus 8 is equal to 9, and then subtract 8 on both sides to finish getting that x is equal to 1. So we now have our values. We have x is equal to 1, z is equal to 2, and y is equal to negative 1. If we had another equation with both an x and a y and a z from the original, we can go ahead and plug these in to check to make sure that we are in fact correct, which would be our last process. While we're doing our elimination, there are a couple steps we can do to kind of help us out. Our first step, we can always interchange rows. So if, for example, our first row or our second row already has a zero for x or for y, we can go ahead and swap those positions to make our elimination process a little easier. The second step is we can go ahead and multiply rows by a value that's not zero. And this helps us get those opposites to then eliminate an x or a y like we did with our last, I'm sorry, our last section. And then we're going to add rows together so I can add a multiple of a row to a row to get it to cancel out. And since we're applying this to a large system, this process is actually known as Gaussian elimination. Uh, let's go ahead and do an example. All right, what we're going to do now is look at the problem from the very beginning. So we're going to start with this original system, and we're going to end up with the exact same answers that we had as if we did back substitution. But we're going to walk through all the steps that we need to get to that point. All right, so our first step is to try and get some things to cancel out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2, and I'm going to add to it row 1. And the reason why I'm doing that is if you look at your equations, we have a positive x and a negative x. And if I add those together, my x is going to cancel out. In the same step, what I can also do is I can say, well, 2x minus 2 times x would also cancel out. So to accomplish that, what I'm going to do is row 3 minus 2 row 1. All right, so I didn't change row 1. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. So we have x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 9. For my second row, I'm going to take row 2, and I'm going to add row 1 to it. So I have negative x plus x. That's going to end up just being a 0, so I'm going to put a 0 there. Then we have 3y plus negative 2y, which is going to end up just being a positive y, so plus y. And then I have z plus 3z, which is 4z. Oops, pen. And then last but not least, I have negative 2 plus 9, which is going to be 7. Okay, for my third row, I'm going to take row 3, and I'm going to subtract 2 times row 1. And again, the reason I'm doing that 
is get my x's to cancel because 2x minus 2 times x is going to end up being 0. All right, so I already discussed that first one's going to be 0. Then we have negative 5y minus 2 times a negative 2 uh, is going to be negative 5y plus 4y, which is a negative y. Then we're going to have a positive 5z minus 2 times 3z, so that's going to be 5z minus 6z, which is negative z. And then for our last term, we have 17 minus 2 times 9, which is going to be 17 minus 18, which is a negative 1. Okay, and just to kind of revisit this again, this notation here is telling me how I'm changing my second row and my third row, and I'm changing them by doing whatever's on the right side. So I'm changing my second row by adding my first row to it, and that's how we got these values. And then I'm changing my third row by subtracting my second row, sorry, by subtracting two times my first row from it. And again, that's how we got these values here. All right, so now working from this standpoint, I notice that my y values are opposites here. So I can go ahead and add those together, which means for my next step, I'm going to go ahead and change row 3, and I'm going to change it by just adding row 2 to it. Now what that means is I'm only changing row 3, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite row 1 and row 2 exactly the same as they were. So then we have x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 9 because row 1 didn't change. And then we have 0 plus y plus 4z because oh, that didn't change. All right, for our third row, again, I'm changing my third row by adding my second row to it. And the reason why we're doing that is because of my y's are going to cancel out. My, my uh, x are already zeros. It's really important, too, that these are already zeros because we don't want that to change. And then I'm going to get a 0y. For my z value, I have a negative z plus 4z, which is going to end up being, uh, sorry, 3z. And then for my last values, we have a negative 1 plus 7, which is going to end up being 6. All right, I can go ahead and look at this last equation here. And if I divide both sides by 2, then I end up getting my z value. I know that z is going to equal 2. So I now know what z is. Once I know what z is, I can do my back substitution. So I can take my z value, and I can plug it into my second equation here, 4z, to help me solve for y. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If I plug in my z value of 2, then we get y plus 8 is equal to 7. And if I subtract 8 on both sides, then we get y is equal to negative 1. All right, so I identified y. I found uh, z. I can go ahead and take my y and my z value and plug those into my original equation to then help me solve for my x value. All right, so if I plug them in, then we get x plus 2 plus 6 is equal to 9. And then if I simplify some things, subtract 8 on both sides, I get x is equal to 1. Okay, for our next example here, again, we're going to go through the same steps. We're going to try to eliminate x and y so that we can solve for z, and then use z to do some back substitution. Our first step is I want to notice uh, the relationship between our x values. So I have a 1x, a 2x, and then a 3x. So if I want to cancel this x out, I can do this row minus 2 times my first row, and that will get my x at the cancel. And my third row, I could do 3x minus three times my first row to get that to cancel. So those are going to be my steps. I'm going to change row two, and I'm going to change it by subtracting two times row one. And then I'm going to change row three, and I'll change that by subtracting three times row one. And again, the reason why we're doing that is to get our x values to cancel. OK, so I'm not changing row one. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that. And that's kind of a pattern here. We generally don't change the first row unless it's really advantageous. Maybe we could switch it with another row. For my second row, I'm going to take 2x minus 2 times x, which is going to be 0, and that's what we want. And then I have negative y minus 2 times y, which is going to give us a negative 3y. We then have z minus 2 times z, which is going to be negative z. And then it's going to equal 3 minus 12, which is negative 9. For our third row, again, we're going to change our third row by subtracting 3 times row 1. We're going to do that to get our x's to go away, so our x's is gone. And then we have 0y minus 3 times y, which is going to be negative 3y. We have negative z minus 3 times z, which is going to be negative 4z. And then we have 0 minus 18, which is going to be negative 18. All right, looking at my second two equations, I have a negative 3y and a negative 3y. 
they are the same. So to get them to cancel, I can subtract. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and change row 3 by subtracting row 2 from it. So that means I'm not changing row 1, similar to our last example. And I'm not changing row 2, again, the same as our last example. But I'm changing row 3, and I'm changing it to get my y's to cancel out. OK, so I'm going to change row 3 by subtracting row 2. I have a negative 3y minus a negative 3y. That's going to be a 0. Also important to remember that our x's were 0, so they are not going to be changing. They're going to stay as a 0, which we definitely want. For our z values, I have a negative 4z minus a negative z, which would be plus z. And that means I'm going to have a negative 3z. And then it is negative 18 minus a negative 9, which would be plus 9, which gets me a negative 9. OK, so my third row, I have just my z value. If I divide both sides of that equation by a negative 3, then I end up getting that my z value is, in fact, equal to 3. Now that I know what z is, I can do back substitution using my second row. I can plug it in, and that would help me identify what my y value is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We have negative 3y, and then minus 3 equals negative 9. I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. So then we get negative 3y is equal to negative 6. And then if you divide by negative 3, then we end up getting that y is equal to 2. All right, I've kind of run out of space here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this problem on the next slide. All right, so from the last slide, we found that z was equal to 3. And also y was equal to 2. So we're going to go ahead and do back substitution into our first equation here to help us solve for our x value, which means that we have x plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6. Simplifying, we get x plus 5 is equal to 6. And then subtracting 5 on both sides, we get x is equal to 1. I'm going to go ahead and verify that that does, in fact, work by plugging all those values into my second equation here. And I should get that it equals to 3. So we have 2 times x, which is 1 minus y, which is 2, and then plus my z value of 3. Simplifying here a little bit, we have 2 minus 2 plus 3 equals 3. We know the 2s are going to cancel. So we do, in fact, get 3 equals 3, and we're able to check our answers to make sure they work. Just like our last section, again, we have three different types of solutions. We could get a unique solution, which is what we experienced with the last two examples, where you get an actual answer for x and for y. You could have no solutions. Similar to our last section, you could get something like 0 equals 5, which does not actually equal itself, which would mean that we, in fact, have no solution. Or we could get infinitely many solutions where you end up getting something like 0 equals 0, which means that these lines somehow all intersect or have an overlapping area, and we have infinitely many solutions. In this example, we're going to explore what it looks like to have a no solution. We're going to go through the same initial steps, and at some point, we'll get to a place where we can verify that we do, in fact, have no solution. So my first step is to go ahead and get my x's to go ahead and cancel out. To get my x in the second row to cancel out, I'm going to do two, or sorry, row 2 minus 2 times row 1 to get my x's to go away. And then for my third row, I can just do row 3 minus row 1, again, to get those x's to cancel. So those are going to be my steps. Again, we have row 2 minus 2 row 1 to get the x's to cancel. And then we have row 3 minus row 1 to get those x's to cancel. All right, so our first row isn't going to change. We again have just x minus 3y plus z is equal to 1. For our second row, we're getting our x's to cancel. And we end up getting plus 5y minus 4z is equal to 0. And then for our third row, again, the x is going to cancel. And we get plus 5y minus 4z is equal to negative 2. All right, looking at my second and my third row, I can see that my y values are the same. So they get those to cancel out, which is my next step. I'm going to just do row 3 minus row 2. And so, again, first row is not changing. We're going to rewrite that. Our second row is not going to change this time. But this time for our third row, we're going to do some subtraction. So we have 0 minus 0. Again, we don't want our x's to change. We want that to stay as a 0. Then we have 5 minus 5, which is 0. Negative 4 minus a negative 4 is going to be 0 as well. And then negative 2 minus 0 is just negative 2. So at this point, we can identify we do, in fact, have no solution because we don't have any variables in our third row 
And what we do actually have is zero is equal to negative two, which is definitely not true. So we can stop at this point. We've identified a discrepancy within our solution. And we can say for sure that we have no solution for this system. In this example, we're going to explore a solution that has infinitely many solutions. To begin with, our steps are the same. We want our x in our second and third row to be zero. The x in our second row is already zero, so that's really good. We don't have to do that. Our x in the third row is not zero yet. So for my first steps, I'm going to go ahead and do r3 plus r1 because by simply adding these values together, I can get those x's to cancel. Since my first row isn't changing, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that. So we have x plus y minus 3z is equal to negative 1. And this time our second row isn't changing either. So we have 0 plus y minus z is equal to 0. For our third row, again, we're going to do row 3 plus row 1. So my x's are going to cancel. 2y plus y is going to be 3y. 0 plus a negative 3z is going to be negative 3z. And then 0, sorry, 1 plus negative 1 is going to be 0. Okay, now I need to get this to be a zero. I'm gonna use my third and my second row to make that happen. So if I take row three and I subtract three times row two, I can get those y's to cancel out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and write down my first and second row because again, they are not changing. The change is occurring in my third row. All right, so when I do row three minus three row two, I get zero, zero, 0, and 0. And when we have a pattern like this, when we have all zeros, what that really means is 0 is equal to 0, which is always true. So if we have a solution like this, what we really have then is infinitely many solutions. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the notes for this section. Go ahead and get started on the homework, and good luck.